Space, the final frontier. When Star Trek originally aired in 1966, NASA's space program was still in its infancy. But Star Trek allowed us to imagine what could be if we dared to boldly go where no one had gone before. For most of us, the thought of traveling to another galaxy probably seems like science fiction. But the truth is, the foundation for humankind's journey beyond our solar system is being laid right now aboard our very own International Space Station. On the original Star Trek TV series, space stations served as deep space research laboratories as well as rendezvous points where starships could dock before exploring the unknown. Lieutenant, contact the space station. Captain, the station is calling us. All right, put them on. When we were envisioning our own space station, the applications were similar. The International Space Station is uh, probably the most fantastic vehicle ever built. It's the one-of-a-kind laboratory orbiting about 250 miles above the Earth. And we perform experiments on the International Space Station. We can do science, we can do experiments, we can learn how to do things out of this world. And the result will help benefit uh, the people on the ground. And all of this data goes to further our knowledge of the universe, so. But it's not just that. We are using the space station as a test bed for future space exploration. It's to further our capabilities to travel in space and ultimately be able to leave this planet and go beyond as humankind. It's not only part of our present and certainly be part of our future. We knew if we were going to continue with this mission of exploration, we need to learn more about the human bodies and how to keep humans safe. So we have to understand what physiological changes occur to the human body uh, when we're in space. The crew of the Enterprise mastered artificial gravity for the most part. We, however, aren't quite there yet, and that comes with its own set of challenges. When you remove the force of gravity from your body, you'll lose things like muscle mass, bone density. Your heart doesn't have to work as hard. Overcoming these challenges will become even more important when humans step foot on Mars, where the crew will have to be self-sufficient. But thanks to the International Space Station, we're able to study the effects of weightlessness and develop countermeasures in orbit close to Earth. That's the boy, keep it up. The International Space Station isn't just providing insight into how our bodies adapt to spaceflight. But we also knew we need to learn a lot more about living in space and how to be self-sufficient to take care of our crews as they went on a deep space journey. For deep space missions, we still have a lot to learn. We need to find out how to mitigate these, lim these limitations that we have. And that's exactly what we're doing on the space station. The ISS is the only laboratory available to test life support systems, crew health systems, habitat modules, and other technologies that would help astronauts be safe and productive on a deep space journey. Do you wish that the first Apollo mission hadn't reached the moon, or that we hadn't gone on to Mars and then to the nearest star? Those are the imaginative things that NASA are looking at. That's every bit as passionately imaginative as science fiction. I personally think that we are at a moment in the history of the human race where we are ready to leap forward, leap out of this planet. And I think it's in our evolutionary creed that we have a manifest destiny to go into space and to, to find new worlds to live in. So every step we take, we're just getting further and further into space and becoming more and more like Star Trek. And just like Star Trek, our journey will never end. Even though we've been sending humans into space for over 50 years, it is still just the beginning. Someday, far into the future, we'll look back and recognize the pivotal role the International Space Station played in humankind's deep space exploration. Given enough time and ingenuity, who knows where our imaginations will take us.